Natural disaster reconstruction is one of the biggest challenges facing humanity. The number of people affected and the scale of the damage is staggering. The United Nations reports that since 1980, more than 75 percent of the world's population has been impacted by natural disasters, causing substantial setbacks for human and economic development. Rebuilding after natural disasters is an incredibly difficult and complex task, which requires a tremendous human effort to restore affected communities. Today, there is growing recognition that we need to build resilient and sustainable infrastructure systems. Systems that not only have the capacity to adapt when disasters occur, but also continue to be used and maintained over time. We don't just want to return to normal, we want to build back better. But unfortunately, this is not always the case in reconstruction projects. Despite the hard work and good intentions of so many dedicated relief agencies, rebuilding efforts continue to be fraught with complications and challenges. Consider what we learned from our research in the Philippines after Typhoon Haiyan in 2013 a devastating natural disaster that destroyed over a million homes and displaced more than four million people across the island nation. Our research team, led by Amy Javernick will Aaron Opdyke, and Matthew Koshman from the University of Colorado Boulder, studied 19 rebuilding sites in three different regions hardest hit by the storm. We interviewed hundreds of community members, agency workers, and government officials over a period of three years. We were amazed at the problems we saw. For example, abandoned housing projects, where people left because their new houses or transition shelters were too far away from water, schools, and economic opportunities. Social tensions, where new houses were not built in line with local customs, as when some families were shunned because their new houses were seen as too big and fancy, violating community norms of modesty and equality. Problems of land tenure, where people were in danger of being evicted from their new houses because the relief agency did not secure the proper land titles. Insufficient resources, where relief agencies simply ran out of money and materials to finish a housing project. Donor restrictions, like when donors specified that their money only be used for housing, which prohibited using the money for water and sanitation projects that were badly needed in the community. Degraded building materials, where supplies were used that were inadequate for local conditions. And service duplication, where multiple houses were built for the same family, but by different relief agencies. All these problems hinder the development of systems and communities that are resilient and sustainable. So how do we overcome these problems for disaster reconstruction work? Well, thankfully, our research also uncovered three key processes that did facilitate the rebuilding of communities that were both resilient and sustainable. Coordination, stakeholder participation, and training. Now, at first, these may seem like common sense, but what we found is that successful projects did them in unconventional ways. First, we often see coordination as a structural issue the formal and planned connections that are established between colleagues and relief agencies. And although formal planning structures are important, we found that informal, emergent coordination processes were much more effective in the context of disaster reconstruction. Every successful project had some sort of informal site, like a food truck or cafe, where the quote-unquote real work of coordination happened outside of formal meetings. Second, we tend to think of stakeholder participation as more of an outcome, a box to check when local citizens are adequately informed or merely allowed to attend public meetings. But we found stakeholder participation to be much more effective when it entailed meaningful involvement throughout the reconstruction planning process, especially in the early phases of planning, like when reconstruction needs are prioritized and building sites are identified. This involved local citizens who were actual collaborators in housing project designs, not just seen as obligations that were entitled to information after decisions were already made. And finally, training homeowners on safe design and maintenance of their new houses was key to sustaining these structures long after the relief agencies left. 
Training worked best when it was hands-on, when homeowners observed and were directly involved in the reconstruction projects, and when the training was aligned with local customs and knowledge, not technocratic jargon. So the big lesson from our research is that we can develop resilient and sustainable infrastructure systems if we're willing to rethink some of the conventional wisdom around coordination, stakeholder participation, and training. Focusing more on emergent practices, meaningful involvement, and local knowledge. Of course, we have much more to say about this research. So if you want to learn more, be sure to check out our project website. Just click on the link below. Our goal is to enhance the work of housing reconstruction after natural disasters. Even in the midst of tragedy, we can still work together and develop a more resilient and sustainable future.